All right, guys, uh, I had a call just come in recently from a, a guy who had some questions for me, but I thought, why not? Because I answer a lot of phone calls and I answer a lot of questions. And I'm, it's a good quality content. I, I'd rather have it for the group so we can all learn from it. Because if he has questions, you may, may be similar to the questions that you have. So I'm going to give him a call back now, and then we're going to go live with it. I'm going to put it on speakerphone. You should be able to hear it. And that's what we'll do. I don't know if get a live notification. I don't know why that is. Anybody know why we're not getting the, the notification about live? All right, so we're going to do that. What's going on, bro? What's up, man? How are you? I'm recording now, just so you know. Okay. All right, so what's the question, man? What can I help you with? All right. I had a discussion with one of the local patrolmen um, where I'm employed, and uh, we had a discussion about, you know, uh, probable cause, uh, motor vehicle stop, when you use a dog um, to sniff the car. And it was told to me, and obviously I'm not in a patrol function, I'm in an investigative function, so... I'll be honest, I'm not as keen on the patrol side of getting into cars as I am on the investigative side, you know, doing search warrants, telephonics, and, and regular, you know, old-fashioned written ones. So the information I got was on a motor vehicle stop, when they go up, they pull the car over for whatever Title 39 violation there is, and they either have something in either plain view or they have some indication given them RAS, you know, that there might be narcotics in a car, and they call for a canine, you know, I have the canine come out. They do the exterior of the car when the dog indicates positively that that's PC for them to get in the car. And I said, okay, well, hmm, it's pretty interesting. That's correct. Um, they, they are right. Correct. And I said, well, in the, um, in the investigative side of things, in a narcotic setting, we don't do it that way. Um, obviously, we don't pull cars over, but we'll do follows um, to high drug trafficking areas. We'll follow a car. You know, it's obviously it's selective enforcement. We're targeting an individual that we know to be involved in narcotics uh, distribution. We'll follow them um, to a high drug trafficking area. We'll follow them back into our county, find a reason to pull the car over for a Title 39 violation, and then we'll have the dog sniff the car. But then at that point, we don't go in the car. We call and get a telephonic search warrant. And the reasoning was given to me is because we're following that car as a targeted enforcement that we're creating the RAS and that's the caveat in the law, you know, on the motor vehicle stop, that officer is not creating any RAS. The RAS is being given to them by their, you know, observations on the stop. And then at that point, the dog's indication is enough for them to get in the car where for us, we're actually creating the RAS and then we're bringing the dog out and the dog is the PC for our application for a telephonic search warrant. I just, you know, as long as I think that's the way it's supposed to go, yeah. but, all right. So, so basically it just depends on what you, what you have so far. And if it satisfies the prong of being unforeseen and spontaneous, like, are you guys following people that other people are giving you Intel on? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting Intel either from informants or from, you know, the crime stoppers tip line, you know, the, the informant, or excuse me, the information is coming to us by a third party saying, Hey, this person goes to say Patterson and they're going to, they buy drugs every Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we follow that car at nine o'clock from our county down to Patterson, and we follow back into our county. You know, have a local patrolman or state police do a motor vehicle stop, run the dog. The dog indicates positively. Apply for a telephonic. We get the car. We find the drugs. It happens it happens all the time that way for us. And you know, I just based on the video I watched, I'm like, I just want to you know, double check and make sure because I'm somewhat new to the narcotics side of things that, that you know we're not taking an extra step. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, dude, for sure. I mean, that is that is the correct way. If you guys are getting tips like that and having intel, I'm going to, you know, again, some of this is a little bit of my opinion. I think it's really comes out to the opinion of a court. But my opinion is, is, yeah, that's not unforeseen and spontaneous. You're you're getting intel. You're getting tipped off. You're getting you're like you're almost getting like a cheat sheet, um, which is well, correct. We're, yeah. we're creating that reasonable, articulable suspicion. Yeah. And you're, by following them based on a tip. And you're just, and you're just finding, you know, it's a pretextual stop. We know because you're just going to find a title 39 violation to stop them. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, correct. And, you know, part of our PC on the application telephonically is, you know, we observe them, leave their location, go to a high drug trafficking area, return to their location or to the area similar or, or, or close to where they live, at which point a Title 39 stop was conducted for, you know, failure to use a blinker, hold on to a stop right. sign. We, it's all a legitimate Title 39 stop. And then we get in the car, you know, 
after the fact. So we're taking that one extra little layer of step. And I, I somewhat understand it. You're taking some of the appeal issues away down the road with, you know, search and seizure and, and suppression issues. And I get it because we want it to be a good case. We don't want to just waste our time out there. Um, you know, and, and like I said, just because I'm somewhat new to the narcotics yeah, yeah. side of things, I just want to make sure we're doing everything on, you know, the best way possible. Yeah, I, dude, I agree. I mean, like if you guys were following, let, let's say you were in in a town and you just got a, you got a, like a, like a hint of a clue that a guy was going to, you know, you just started following somebody. You had no other intel. Nobody told you anything. And you followed a car into Newark or Patterson. And then you saw them pick up, or maybe they went into Newark and three minutes later, you picked them back up coming out of coming off of 21. And, Correct. and then you pulled them over. That'd be a little different, but because you're actually getting somebody communicating to you some intelligence, uh, without it being completely cold, you're still going to have to go for that search warrant. It always has to be unforeseen and spontaneous. And, and that's and that's part of, that's a prong in, in that um, you know yeah. I so guess, that's what said yeah. Probable cause or search and seizure provision that the patrol guys on the street are just pulling a car over for you know rolling through a stop and, and while they're doing their stop, they're actually getting information that's keying them in on hey this is something narcotics. Right. So we're, um, this is where we separate from the federal standard, uh, which a lot of states still use. Uh, you know they you wouldn't need this with the federal standard, but that's what the the extra little layer of protection that. New Jersey put into uh, Supreme Court, put into the case law to protect certain citizens and things. Now, I will tell you this. There's also another case called State versus Z- Ziamar Gonzalez out of 2016. And what it was, it was the same thing. There were some narcotics uh, detectives, I think, in Ocean or Middle uh, or uh, Monmouth County. And they were following a girl. They knew she had just picked up a kilo or not a kilo. I'm sorry. A ton of heroin. Uh, like a, I forgot what, how much heroin it was. So they they go to effectuate the stop. When they do, she hits the brakes, I guess, and all the product falls forward into the car. And when they walk up, it's a, it's a plain view seizure. They subsequently search the car, and the court said that was okay. So if you if you come across those circumstances where you're you're walking up on a car and there's plain view stuff, then you could search the car. You don't need to get a search warrant for that. But without that plain view and a dog indication with your intel, you're, you're definitely going to need a search warrant. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, in the county I'm employed in. Um, it- they always err on the side of caution, which I don't think is a bad thing because we can get a telephonic relatively quickly. It's really not impeding the investigation. You're just out on the road for another you know, 15 or 20 minutes, but we don't have a hard time up here getting um, uh, telephonic. And I, I, my thought is that they just go to that one extra level to make sure that the case is for, um, yeah, for you. Yeah, for you guys, but for patrol division, it's a useless gesture. It's not necessary. But, but, but definitely for, for any investigator, any, any narcotics guy that's watching this, and you, you have intel, or even there's patrol divisions that – uh, who, who actually let their guys do interdiction? Do, yeah. Well, not not just interdiction, but like, dude, there's smaller towns where uniformed patrol officers are are working with CIs. You know, they they don't have a narcotics division. Correct. Uh, so they're yeah, towns. same yeah. thing. They're doing the soup to nuts. Yep. So when we say patrol division, we're talking about just it really depends on the investigative uh, side of things. But that's cool, man. Do you have any other questions? No, no, no. It's uh, it's been good watching your videos, man. I appreciate you putting this stuff out. It's uh, it's definitely helpful for guys that. I've seen smaller towns that maybe may not see what the bigger towns are seeing. It's uh, it's always good to get a refresher, especially a couple years out of the academy. So uh, yeah, I appreciate what you're doing. Cool, man. Hey, listen, if you need anything, got my number. You call me anytime. Appreciate it. I will, Dennis. Thanks, buddy. All right, see you. Bye, bye. All right. So there's there's the video from uh, that's the phone call. I can't give his name or age. See why he wanted. To, I told him well, let's keep it vague for the video. But hopefully, you guys learned something from it. Um, if you didn't hear it, or I'm going to do another one. I got another phone call coming up. Because I get calls all day from another guy. I'm going to go live with it. Hopefully, we can learn from him. He's got a good question. Uh, I'm not going to reveal where he's from. You know, everybody's nervous because their administrations are can be tough. Uh, but if you guys have questions, you can you can call in. You can let me know. Uh, let's try to share them in the group. There's it's all law enforcement in this group. I don't know if maybe one or two people snuck in. But if they did, I don't think it's going to really have a huge impact on crime in the United States because one or two people snuck into street cop training that I'm trying to keep all law enforcement. So don't panic. It's all good. I have control of the group. Uh, if you guys need anything, you can always reach out to me. We'll come back soon with a uh, with another another phone call. So until then, a few minutes, I'll call you back.